but what we do for our clients is we take the position of the hacker, uh, we uh, attack the system from every avenue available to us, uh, both uh, from a viewpoint of outside the system, and we also try to use insider information to get inside the system. And what we do then is we feed the results of that uh, those attacks back to our customers and to their suppliers and with recommendations on how to make the system more difficult to attack. So uh, over the course of the several years that we've been doing this, uh, the, those recommendations have been incorporated and the systems are becoming harder and harder to penetrate to the point that uh, some of the systems are, are very difficult to penetrate. Now, cool, you were listening to David Chalk? Uh, yes, I was. And what was your reaction to your impression? Uh, you know, so I guess I guess one of the points he makes is, um, you know, the, the systems are never never going to be 100% secure. So, so really, you know, what we're, what we're trying to do is 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 essentially raise the bar uh, of of what an attack entails and and you know the resources that are required to execute an attack. So, you know, if you take the example of electricity theft, for example, um, you know, you may be able to hack into a meter and start stealing electricity and say you can save yourself a hundred dollars a year well if that attack uh, costs you twenty thousand dollars to execute on your meter um, you know it's not going to be very worthwhile for you to actually actually do that so so what we really try to do is is not necessarily guarantee 100 percent security on a system because that's that's impossible uh, and and it would be cost cost prohibitive uh, what we try to do instead is, uh, as I mentioned, you know, raise the bar so that uh, it, it doesn't make sense to launch these attacks. Well, you, you don't fill me with confidence when you say they can never be 100% secure. Well, let's let's look at uh, at uh, various segments of our economy, uh, banking, the communications we're using to have this call, uh, transportation, uh, water distribution. Um, all of those systems use automation uh, to maintain those systems and to function. We couldn't be having this call or we couldn't be having Internet services or anything of uh, we, uh, we think of as modern society without automation. So uh, if we look at society, all of these systems are potentially hackable. Now, what has happened in the communications and the banking industry and other areas is we have built so many uh, safeguards into the system that uh, hacking of those systems is rare, and it is uh, a very limited impact. Uh, yes, we know that, uh, as he said, certain companies have been hacked and their information is stolen, but if you compare that to the huge numbers of companies who rely on the Internet every day and take the necessary security precautions and are conducting business over it every day without any incident, then, the, uh, then what you see is that uh, if we take cybersecurity uh, seriously and that we take the appropriate steps, we can prevent the hackers from uh, having any significant impact, certainly keep them from bringing the grid down. David Chuck, technology expert, uh, is ringing an alarm bell over smart meter safety. You heard him in our previous half hour. Gary Ragsdale is an engineer with Southwest Research Institute. They consult with utilities all around North America, and BC Hydro has hired Southwest to do ethical hacking work for the smart meter program. Nakul Jareth is the group leader with Embedded Systems Security Group. Uh, Nakul, is the BC Hydro grid at a point now where it can fairly be tested for hacking? Uh, sure. So I, I can, you know, talk a little bit about the the process that we generally take when when um, you know doing the testing that we do here. So so what we typically do is we'll get uh, a representative production system from BC Hydro, which essentially means we'll we'll set up a system that's going to look. Uh, as close as possible to what um, you know the, the utility would be rolling out uh, in um, in their production environment. Uh, get that here in our labs, set it up, uh, including you know. Back
back-end software, uh, which would be the servers and things like that that handle all the data when it comes back to, to the utility, uh, and then all the devices that would make up the smart meter uh, system uh, down to the meters that would be on the home. And then essentially what we do is we let our, our engineers, uh, our hackers that we have on staff, uh, essentially just let them loose on the system and um, you know execute uh, go through our test plan basically the uh, the various avenues of attack that we've identified and and essentially identify uh, what what they can find and as as Gary mentioned earlier report that back to the utility uh, and and the the vendors to to help to um, uh, protect against those types of attacks but if you found BC Hydro to be vulnerable you wouldn't tell me would you Right. That's uh, you know we're we're bound by uh, client uh, uh, confidentiality and, and we can't you know speak to those those the specific results. Let me take some calls, Susan. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Um, Nicole and Gary, just like David Chalk said, would you sign off on a statement of accountability that all one billion dollars worth of smart meters for British, British Columbians' private data is safe? Uh, we don't certify uh, any kind of testing of that sort. What I can tell you is that the meters are protected and that the data that's being collected is uh, only usage data uh, and that personal information is not a part of it. The, the thing to, to realize about smart meters is that they're a part of a larger system called the smart grid and that the benefits to uh, the people like yourself who are going to have these smart meters is, is that they improve the stability of the grid, they add better control and management of the grid, and we're adding it not because uh, we need uh, to know your personal information, but because we need to know how to manage the grid better. People are going to be buying electric cars. They're going to be adding solar to the roofs. We're going to be using more renewable energy and more clean energy products and as we add these to the grid uh, we have uh, the opportunity to uh, reduce our environmental impact our reliance on oil and that but without this automation we're going to destabilize the grid and make it unreliable uh, experiences on other grids in North America as we've added wind energy has demonstrated that Without these management tools, without the smart grid, we can't add large quantities of smart or clean energy like wind and solar to the grid, reduce our environmental impact, and increase our energy independence. Gary Ragsdale is an engineer with Southwest Research Institute, and Nakul Jareth is a group leader of Embedded System Security Group. Their task is to try to make the smart meter data fully protected and not vulnerable to the kind of attack that David Chalk is uh, suggesting. I welcome your calls to them. Matt, good morning. Uh, my question is, if we are not guaranteed 100% security with these smart meters, um, how, how can we be uh, sure that this, is, this system is not going to fail? Like it's, it seems to me like it's destined to fail or somebody's going to hack into this system. Mr. Ragsdale? Well, the first piece of uh, information that's not on the meter is your identity. Uh, if you go outside your meter and look at it today, it shows usage and it has an ID. So when, when your technician comes by and reads your manual meter, he only gets usage. He doesn't know your name or anything about it. That information is held back at the main computer systems inside uh, your utility and that's, that information is protected and it is not given out. The same thing is true on the new meter. Uh, the only thing that's being harvested is the usage information. Uh, there is no personal identity information inside the meter. Rennie. Uh, I'm really amazed by the smart meter program. It has spawned a whole new vibrant industry. Money making It's a money-making proposition for companies such as those represented by your guests this morning. Um, what I've heard from them, and repeatedly when they first began, was that it's, they're making it difficult, more difficult, to hack into the, the, the grid, but not impossible. Your second guest said that they'd raise the bars, but it's not 100% secure. My thanks to Nicole Jarrett and to uh, Gary Ragsdale.
And, of course, to David Chalk. Interesting discussion.